Hi everyone, my name is Max and today I'm not really making anything useful I guess, but firewood. A friend of mine chopped down this big cedar tree in his backyard and they had no way of getting it out of there in one piece, so they cut the log into discs. I got two of them and dried them for one and a half years in my basement. They split open over time and changed their shape a lot. My plan was to fill the cracks with crystal clear epoxy, polish them and then making an elaborate base from carbon fiber for them. I didn't get that far unfortunately, but I thought I'd share this mishap with you anyway. The bark was in really good shape, so I started by protecting it with a coat of clear epoxy. Then it was time to fill the cracks. And this is where the problem started. I used tape to seal up the cracks. The epoxy I used was so thin that it ran through the tape straight away. The fibers of the wood also soaked up all the epoxy, so oftentimes when I made a pour, it would just vanish. Of course I didn't know that at the beginning. It all looked really good at the start. The carefully laid out plastic foil did not protect my table or the floor. On the second disc I sealed all the tape edges with hot glue. Surely that would be watertight now. It wasn't and I got another load of epoxy on my floor and the table, which had been cleaned by then. So next up I used silicone and this worked really well. At least we can learn something from this. But now we encountered a second problem. The epoxy forms super tiny bubbles as it flows into the crack. These bubbles are so tiny that even heating the epoxy won't bring them to the surface. And of course there were cracks that would soak up epoxy for hours. Removing the stuff wasn't easy either. Did I mention that this epoxy takes 48 hours to cure? That means 48 hours without me being able to do anything else in the workshop because I couldn't create any dust. The silicone left a weird surface finish that didn't look like the wood bark. So I routed out the section and filled it up with fresh epoxy again. I did this several times to get the right texture. Can you see the cloudiness? Anyway, I thought I'd move on to flattening the disc and worrying about the epoxy later. For that I built this really easy jig, which was a great success. The crack jig made this job really easy, at least something that worked fine. If you want to flatten a slab yourself at home, make sure that these rails are absolutely parallel and are the same height. This created a ton of dust. I'm using a shop vac and this cheap cyclone that you can get on Amazon. This works really well. The surface finish was alright and I could have used a normal sander to flatten it perfectly. But a friend of mine has a professional wood shop and he let me use his belt sander. This removes 0.2mm per pass but it still wasn't enough to remove all the epoxy marks. These stains penetrated so deep that even after 12mm I couldn't get rid of them entirely. My hope at this point was that since they are made from clear epoxy I could just polish them later with the rest of the surface and they would become invisible. So I started the sanding process, which also worked really great. I went from 80 grit all the way up to 5000 and the epoxy got clearer and clearer with every pass. I applied an oil finish in the hope it would conceal the marks a little bit. That didn't work, and it left behind a spotty finish. On the other disc I tried the epoxy finish, but I thought at least that's the same material so you wouldn't be able to see the marks anymore. The first coat of epoxy was soaked into the wood fibers straight away. 200 milliliters were gone in a few minutes. But surely now the fibers must be fully saturated with epoxy and I could apply a second layer. It looked very promising at the beginning, but the next day it formed these ripples and because my workshop was too cold, it also wouldn't harden properly. At this point I had been working on this project for two months, with countless epoxy pores and hardening periods in between. I had enough. There were so many defects that it would be an endless journey of pouring, sanding and polishing the wood. I also had no way of achieving the look I ever wanted and I couldn't spend any more time sanding, polishing and pouring. So I did what anyone would have. I smashed it to bits. 
I guess you have to know when to call it quits. And this was definitely the point. I really wish for a better outcome and I will still build this coffee table at a later time. Just a little bit different. The base was to be the main feature here, which I didn't even get to. At least this wood was dry enough to make for a nice fire. But this came with its own struggle. I'm already working on a new project in the form of a super bright desk lamp made from aluminium and carbon fiber. Stay tuned for that. If you like these kind of build projects, please subscribe to my channel. Making these videos isn't cheap and I could make them more frequently if you supported me on Patreon. That will also give you access to behind the scenes updates and special content. I'm also excited to announce that you can now get the exact same favorite tools of mine over at the Max Maker Amazon store. I guess that's it for the week and I'm going to enjoy this fire a little bit more now. I guess I somewhat earned it after even polishing the firewood. Hopefully the next project will work out better, but that's how it is sometimes, you can't always win. Thanks for watching guys, my name is Max and I make all kinds of stuff.